wrote this up. Yes, my name's Doodle Wilson. I'm a television commercial and occasional music video director. Uh, yes, so I'm going to be telling you, hopefully, about uh, a recent thing I've worked on, um, the, uh, the IDENTS, which are the bits between the shows that tell you what channel you're watching, obviously, uh, for Channel 4. And um, I'm going to start by giving you a bit of context about the uh, one I worked on, by giving you a very brief history of the Channel 4 IDENTS, um, also to pad out my speech, because it's quite a short piece of work. Um, so. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, probably very hard for you, most of you here, to believe, but one time in this country we only had three channels. Uh, and this is probably before most of you were born. Suddenly, on the 12th of November, 1982, this happened. <laughs> Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be able to say to you, Welcome to Channel 4. Tell from the start they're pretty cutting out. You had a computer, an airport, cool stuff like that. The uh, funny man, running, man on the horse. It's a little less than the launch. Incredibly exciting. Um, and uh, it was groundbreaking stuff. And the logo which was computer animated. This was also very groundbreaking, and it was um, created by this very famous designer, Martin Lambinen. Have you heard of him? You should look him up. Um, <clears throat> and it quickly became very iconic. In fact, it was actually parodied in a um, Hamlet cigar advert, which I'm going to show you. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. The good old days when you could advertise cigarettes on the television. Uh, and they, yeah, they started getting pretty adventurous with it quite quickly, uh, as you can see from this variation from 1985. Very They had lots of um, very good uh, people working on this. They had Arden Animations did stuff, the, the Bolex Brothers did stuff. They had lots of, um, it was, you know, kind of a golden age for experimentation. And then somewhere, sometime in the early 2000s, 2005, I think, they chanced upon this very cool device of the logo coming into parallax with itself. And ugh, I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, I'll, I'll show you. My, this is my, my favorite one from this series. You'll, you'll know these. These they were so successful, they ran for 15 years. That's how many, and they made like loads of them. But this is my favorite one. Now on four, Dumble come dine, and are aubergines really the food of the gods? say, oh, it's not as good as those ones, but <laughs> ignore that. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, by this point, I guess everyone was pretty used to this logo, and where do you go from there? So, in, in 2015, um, they decided to break into the pieces. This kind of thing happened in the show. They also did um, some really cool, remarkable films with, with um, director Jonathan Glazer, um, but I'm not going to show those tonight because we're showing my ones. <laughs> so, this brings us to mid 2017, uh, and at this point, the blocks land quite literally on my desk. Uh, <clears throat> there they are, on my desk. Uh, nine pieces. This is pretty much what Channel 4 gave me as the brief. They said, there you go, these blocks. And um, you'll notice they're covered in a slightly unpleasant looking gray substance. It's actually white tack, the white version of blue tack. And I'll reveal why shortly. Um, so 
They, uh, they wanted me to try and think of some ideas. That was basically the script uh, with these blocks. I don't know, it's not really a script, is it? And they said, we want to have some ideas that where <clears throat> we involve these blocks in Britain with real British people in real locations and they reflect the channel's values of um, being provocative and celebrating diversity and being entertaining. So I started trying to think. So these are some of my first ideas. I thought that was quite um, <laughs> divisive, <laughs> disruptive. And, um, <clears throat> and I thought, oh, someone could open the door and they could all come to the door. And that would be annoying and disruptive. <laughs> And then they wanted to talk about breaking down barriers and, you know, no walls. So I thought, well, what about the logo? It's a wall and it breaks apart. So didn't go with that. <clears throat> and then they also wanted to talk about um, the positive effect that migration can have by bringing in diversity to the country. So I thought, you know, we could literally have migrants on the blocks. Um, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, you laugh, but one of them ended up a bit like that. So, um, <laughs> so I was still mess I was something was missing to hold it all together. It was just like these one-off ideas. Like, yeah, this. So um, while I was playing with the blocks on my desk, I thought, hang on, has anyone ever? Yeah. Yeah. So that was where the blue tech came in, uh, which has since got a bit smeared all over them, but. And I thought that's interesting because that's a character, and maybe he could um, he could you know represent the values, and we could have little stories with him in it. And I also quite like the it felt interesting, you know, because I'd, I'd seen stuff like this, um, which is a um, pronounce this right, an Inuksuk, which is one of those Arctic uh, Inuit uh, sculptures on the stone landmark they have, and I, it sort of felt like a little bit pagan or something, and I quite like the idea of that. So I started thinking, well, where could this figure be? Um, you know, how big would he be? And what was he going to do? So I started taking photographs of my little model on my desk with my angle poised lamp doing the lighting and sticking him into um, scenarios. So it's a man with a boat. What's, what's, what's he thinking? Uh, going down the pub. Getting a bus. Standing in the middle of the road, mysteriously, having a fun slide in the snow, <laughs> hanging out with the kids, <laughs> surfing on some cars, <laughs> creeping out people, <laughs> watching the football, climbing a tree, and you know, doing dangerous stuff like, you know, acrobatics on electric wires. And, and Ford Creative, who are the in-house ad agency at Channel 4, um, they seem to like all this, but they said they're still very keen on expressing the, the channel's core values um, quite explicitly. So I just had to write lots and lots of ideas. And um, they, they went into these different categories, like is it provocative, does it reflect diversity, uh, is it entertaining, does it bring people together? So some of the ideas that I then came up with were a bit sort of on the nose, like this one is basically a, it's a gay couple getting married and the, instead of getting driven away by a car, they're on the top of the Channel 4 man and he's got just married on his back. And it was something more right, but it was a bit like, you know, you're showing your agenda a bit too, obviously, maybe. And I preferred the things that were more graphic and simple, like, um, you know, the, the guy running along with all his kids from an estate, um, cycling around his legs and ratting along. I didn't quite end up with that, but it was that kind of thing. But meanwhile, of course, technically, how are we going to do this? So I worked quite a lot with um, a company called MPC, the Moving Picture Company, and they started doing some test animations for me. So this is one of the first little things they tried out. I gave them a Tom Wood photograph of a real bit of Britain. And, uh, yeah. There you go, job done. <laughs> Run it. So we're testing out what he would feel like moving and testing out you know, what the camera could be doing. And then of course, what is he actually gonna look like and you know, what's gonna be made of? And because of that um, Green Greenlandic statue thing, I thought, well maybe something heavy and stony like 
concrete, but then it, it just looked a bit weird. So then we tried all sorts of things like paint and then um, paint that's been a bit weathered. And then we thought, well, what, should, what color should you be? You know, should you be black, white? Should you be see-through? Should you be the color of the logo? But it ended up looking a bit like the Bertie Bassett logo. <laughs> and then, I thought, well, we thought, well, maybe, because he's big and he's a giant and, you know, We've, we've seen things in culture a bit like this, like the Iron Giant or big robots. Maybe he should just be weathered metal. So we, we tested that at NPC and it looked pretty nice. So that was some of the tests we did just to check the metal surface. So then meanwhile, we were still getting the script sorted out and they were still, um, I was writing all these ideas and they kept saying, no, it's not reflecting our values. Um, and um, this was one of the ideas which everyone seemed to like, um, including me, which was just the, the giant playing football with some kids in a street up in the north of England somewhere. So I know it's not exactly a script, but it summarizes what we want to happen. So um, <clears throat> then with the, um, the, the migration theme, they were really quite keen on that. So that developed into this kind of weird narrative where thing rises out of the sea um, with lots of people on his head and then deposits them on the south coast of England. Um, and I was like, are you sure? You want to do that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> because I think that's, yeah, Channel 4, they, they like to provoke and um, get discussions going. And then um, they also want to involve disability um, because they've got a strong link with uh, disability rights and uh, uh, including dis disabled people in the diverse group of people they champion. Uh, so we have this pretty weird idea where he was going to be lying across a motorway, blocking the traffic and, and allowing a, a wheelchair to go across, so, which we didn't end up with. We ended up with another disabled thing, which was a bit more simple. But it's just, I'm, I guess what I'm doing is showing you the journey we went through to come up with these four pretty short, pretty simple items. We, did, we really did think about it quite a lot. And then we also thought um, he should serenade a town with a voice. What's his voice? And um, we thought, wow, well, Channel 4 used to have this um, Sonic logo. It's called Four Score. Da, 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 da. Um, which is, funnily enough, actually only three notes because one's repeated, but just pointed that out to the composer. <coughs> um, so we thought, if he's on top of a hill and he's speaking to a town, what would his voice sound like? Well, you know, if, the, if he's going to make that noise of a giant, a metal giant, make the, the same four score jingle, maybe it'd be um yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> Sorry about that. So by this point we were getting on with finding the locations. <clears throat> they really wanted us to go outside London and go up to the regions, so we went to the Peak District and this is um a storyboard I did for the, um, the one where he honked. <clears throat> so, as you can see here, there's not much drawing. It's basically me taking photographs of the locations and then taking photographs of my model and plonking him in and telling the story that way. Uh, so, and then there's a few drawings where I can't do that. You could, obviously, you can tell the ones that are drawn. Just <laughs> Um, and then I was also filming little tests with my uh, 5D and my iPhone and giving that to NPC and then just trying the animation onto it. So this is um, the sort of thing we ended up with just to see the feeling of it. <clears throat> That's a man holding a reference for the size of him. And then with the football one, I really wanted it to feel like one shot. So we use a pre-visualization at NPC just to plan this out and work out where my hidden cuts would be because it was getting pretty clear that we weren't going to do it as one shot because they'd probably, you know, there'd be a mistake, someone would drop the ball or something. Plus, how are we going to get the kids up on the arms in one shot? How are we going to have the giant there? We should probably put an element in. Anyway, so I'll, this is a previous um, showing just me the timing of the, the location. This is the locations are projected onto this pre-visualization. Um, so, like, <laughs> <in the past. clears throat> Again, we could have just run this and run save myself one. <laughs> And this is the same thing from above, just to show where the camera move would be. So, this all helped. But at the same time, I obviously had to find the actual people to be in it. So, we did a lot of casting in Liverpool for this one. <clears throat> we found um, some very 
good kids, and I did this kind of, it's not an animatic, it's a crap of the uh, of the football, just, it's so rough, it's embarrassing, but I'll show you anyway. So, yeah, just, it's just some kids playing football, really. The man in the way represents the... That's one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So at this point, um, I've been going for 70 minutes. I'm going to show you. I'll just show you the items because I've, I've you know, probably rinsed it. <laughs> as far as um, okay. Here you go. Here's the first one. Um, the next one, um, almost finished, is what the migration one came out as. It's a bit of a different feel to the others, um, and it, it really was uh, Channel 4 wanting to raise this issue and, and champion diversity caused by migration. And um, I, so I'll show you it just on the big screen. If you want to see it again with some interesting comments, uh, go to the Breitbart website. <laughs> citizens and they, they've all been living here with um, there's doctors and scientists and a uh, nurse, a fireman um, and that's so the genuine people so um, it does have a good point um, and this is my favourite, the last one, um, the one with the um, Scallies playing football. <laughs> 